self-contained. Self-contained is a term that's sometimes loosely used and not clearly defined. Um, but what you are going to find is if you hit uh, the road and you live this nomadic life, you're, you should have an understanding of what self-contained means because it could restrict you from certain RV parks or campgrounds. So self-contained in its most comprehensive way to be defined means that you have an RV, whether it's a travel trailer or a motorhome, that has a sleeping quarters, a kitchen, and a bathroom. And definitely, mainly the full use bathroom. Why is that important? Because if some campgrounds or RV parks do not have a common use bathroom, and you are going to stay there overnight or several nights. Technically, there's there's plenty of ordinances. I'm not saying that right. There's plenty of rules within counties that if people are spending the night on property, there has to be a, a, a means of which they dispose of their waste, meaning when you go to the bathroom. So if the campground or RV park does not have a common use bathroom and shower facilities... They mandate that the RV you bring on their property has that fully uh, full use bathroom, meaning a toilet bowl and a shower. Now, that's not the case in a lot of RP, RV parks and campgrounds that I have visited throughout the United States, mainly on the eastern coast, because most of them tend to have at least one common use shower and bathroom facility. However, it comes to it comes into play when you're purchasing an RV because some of the micro tra uh, trailers and even some motorhomes like the camper van class B motorhomes do not have a fully self-contained unit. They may have a sleeping quarters, but they don't have the uh, bathroom uh, with the toilet bowl and shower. Now the kitchenette, that can be not always, that cannot always apply, but I have ran into some RV communities where it's like a community where you buy property and they will not let you rent or buy property in that community unless your RV has uh, not just a toilet bowl and a shower, but also a cooking quarters and a sleeping quarters. So that you want all three, technically. You want the sleeping quarters, the cooking quarters, and the uh, bathroom facilities. Because basically that is self-contained. That means you can live you can live with inside that unit, that RV, whether travel trailer or motorhome, and not need outside assistance to survive. You can cook, you can go to the bathroom, you can shower, and you can sleep. You don't need to go outside your unit. You are self-contained. Now, sometimes people say, well, I'm self-contained because I got everything I need here. Like, I live on my Jeep Renegade. I have everything I need here. You know, I have, a, you know, like a pee jug. I, but I don't, you know, because technically, you know, I still use public restrooms. I still use the gym to shower. I'm not self-contained. And that's, you know, technically, if you're going to buy an RV, you need to think about that. And I think about that. Because, again, I have a, a, a car that can only tow maximum 2,000 pound capacity. And I would still have to get a custom hitch installed on my Jeep. And when I was looking at travel trailers that I could pull with my Jeep, it's really only the micro teardrop trailers, which usually only have a sleeping quarters. If they have a kitchen, it's like on the back. It's not inside the unit, and that's really technically not self-contained. And there's no bathroom. There's no shower. So, you know, if you are going to get an official RV, I think it makes sense to get the fully self-contained. Are there exceptions? There's always exceptions. And there's always do whatever you want, right? This is me just sharing a video. And I'm not saying I would never get a non-self-contained unit, but I think about that. When I do look at RVs, if I ever change my living setup, which is living out of my Jeep, then I would consider, I would take a serious look and be more persuaded to go to a unit, whether travel trailer or motorhome, that's fully self-contained so that I know it's never going to be an issue. Okay, I'm just eliminating a possible problem. Um, and if you're going to go to an RV, I mean, it kind of makes sense to have those features just in case you need them or for even resale value. But something to consider that I want to bring up uh, to you, if, if you don't have a self-contained unit uh, uh, and you have experience, leave a comment. If you, I know there's one viewer, Tom, he, um, 
from California, he's a full believer in a self-contained unit because he doesn't like, and I understand it, he doesn't like, he's like a germ germphobe. He doesn't like to be in the public, use public facilities. And that's a serious issue when you do live on the road. If you're using public facilities, you are more vulnerable to common colds and diseases because you're out in the public more. When you're self-contained, you don't have to use public facilities as much. So, you know, there's something to be said for that. But either way, if you appreciate this video, I appreciate if you click the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're not. I have a whole playlist on my channel talking about the nomad life. Check it out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace and love.